Alrighty, we're recording now. Our uh, controller altitude shows 43 foot in altitude, and on the uh, application it shows 44 feet. I'm going to go ahead and move it forward. On the application, it's showing that we're 60 feet from home point. And uh, on the controller, it's showing that we're 55 foot from home point. Now notice it's updated on the app to 58 foot. We'll go ahead and take it up to an altitude of about 100 feet. All right, so we're at 136 feet according to the controller altitude and 137 feet according to the application altitude. At this point what we're going to do is a uh, battery, dur battery duration check. We're going to allow it to hover at uh, 130, 136, 137 feet and uh, land itself when the battery is depleted. So we've flown a little bit. We've uh, raised our altitude and hovered, raised our altitude and hovered, uh, but the, for the most part we are going to allow this just to hover and uh, check the battery time on this flight. I'm going to do some small, slow yaw operations just for the sake of uh, breaking the monotony on the footage. I notice the, the yaw seems to be, I'm not sure if it's the feedback that I'm receiving in the display or if it's the actual yaw action. Um, does not seem to be as smooth um, as far as what you see in the sky compared to what you see on the screen. It seems to start out slow and then speed up and then uh, you'll have to back off at yaw. It may just be the yaw rates. See how it's, 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 it's it starts out slow, feels if it's speeding up, and then you manually let off of that again. I'm going to take it up to 200 feet. Passing 190 let off the throttle. We're sitting at 203 feet on the controller and 204 feet in the application. You notice that this uh, is a very, very stable gimbal. The horizon is extremely flat compared to some other uh, units out there. Signal looks good on my controller. It's showing all bars showing that I've got 19 satellites on my controller and on the application it shows I've got 19. Got full bars again for my radio of uh, control signal. Go ahead and give it a little bit of yaw. I find it very nice that you can look at the degree of the gimbal pitch on the right side of the uh, Starlink app. I'm nine degrees down just to help avoid any type of uh, prop interference as far as prop appearing in the footage. If you see uh, the color settings here on the screen, what I have is a let me see if it will allow me to go into that. I'm not certain if it, I better not because I think what it does is stops recording. But what I've got is a, uh, a custom 
color setting. Uh, basically the profile is none or normal. And then under the custom settings I have each of the sharpness and the contrast and I think it's the uh, saturation set to a plus one. And my shutter speed currently you'll see is one sixteen hundredth of ISO of 100. I don't have the uh, ND filters inserted into the lens ring which do help reduce uh, any stuttering that you might see with fast yaw movements. It shows here, if you look at the top of the screen, we've got about 16 minutes of flight time remaining with a battery charge level of 65%. And if you notice the footage, it's very, very stable. I like to take a look at the actual um, camera footage and I'll isolate a corner on the bottom and compare it to uh, some scenery on the ground and just observe that just to get an idea of its stability as far as it may be wandering or rotation or any kind of abnormality as far as uh, the gimbal not being able to compensate or the GPS coordinates for the uh, quadcopter uh, being inaccurate enough that would might allow it to, to drift. Very, very stable platform. I'm going to give it a little bit more yaw movement. I'm in Claremont, Florida here. I'm at uh, what's called Hiawatha Park, Hiawatha Reserve Park. What you see right there, the large lake in the center of the screen is Lake Mineola. We're right in the south, uh, south center portion of Lake County here in Claremont, Florida. Sixty percent battery. We've been able to hold our altitude pretty consistently. Right now my uh, controller is showing 203 foot in altitude and it's matching my application showing it, well, at now 204, it's 203 again. So they're very consistent. I think there's just probably some delay in uh, the update rate that each receive. I did take this uh, flight off and get it up to a hover before I started the recording. So there may be a few seconds or a few minutes difference in the uh, recorded video duration versus actual flight time. We're sitting at 57% battery. Shows we have a remaining 13 minutes and 40 or 52 seconds remaining of flight time. Very good. 19 satellites still. I found that uh, shooting, compared to shooting with a DJI Phantom 3 Pro in log mode, I'm, I'm seeing some people make comment that this is uh, oversaturated. It, it may be. Um, however, I found with log mode, uh, a lot of people uh, boast regarding the log mode and I was one of the log mode shooting fanboys as well still am to some degree I, I enjoy shooting log and adjusting to colors myself but I'll tell you what when you can get color this accurate and it's it's uh, just rained over the past few days here in Central Florida and things green up really quick and I'm looking at the sky compared to what I'm seeing in the feedback in this monitor and it's very very accurate the colors are very accurate the blues may be a touch touch uh, cooler or maybe a little more saturated, but uh, again, I'm plus one on all the settings uh, under the profile attributes where you can adjust your sharpness, contrast, and uh, color bright or color saturation. So, if maybe it was a little bit too saturated for you, you could set that back to zero. But I find this very pleasing. I watch this on a, a Roku uh, on a Plex server at the house, and so I'm able to watch this in uh, 1080p HD. And believe it or not. TVs do display this information different than computers do. Uh, computers typically aren't intended to display this type of footage where a TV's uh, hardware uh, properties are generated more at uh, serving up uh, motion picture versus that of what a computer can typically offer you. 204 foot on the application, 203 foot on the controller. 
Everything's looking good. We're showing 11 minutes and 32 seconds remaining of flight. Give it a little bit of yaw action here. Alright, right here I would be facing directly east. Directly east across Lake Mineola. I'm uh, doing a screen capture with the show application on an iPad Air 2 uh, to bring to anyone's attention who may be using an iPad Air 2 or an iPad of that dimension. It easily fits in the holder on this uh, transmitter uh, with about three quarters to an inch to spare uh, room so it's going to easily accommodate larger devices. It holds this quite comfortably. It is under pressure, it's spring loaded and uh, does quite well, allowing the antennas to be in a vertical position so that they can send and receive that signal in the way that the polarization is set up for these types of antennas. Now from my position where I'm at, um, I'm in the shade under a tree. Uh, the drone is at about 30 yards out if I were to walk forward and then up vertically the 204 feet. So. Um, the antenna orientation in regards to the craft is not ideal. However, it's close enough that uh, the signal should still be reaching it just fine and of course it looks like it is. But the further you're out, you want to make sure that you are pointed towards the aircraft and that your signal or your antennas on the transmitter are in a vertical orientation according to the, the position of the craft. So you always, in a sense, want to act as if the antennas are a flat panel aimed at the aircraft. And that way you're going to broadcast and receive that signal as best as possible. Got 12 minutes, 17 seconds flight time. 9 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. We're at 38% battery. I believe I've got my um, warning set at 30% and critical landing at 10%. I'm going to give a little bit of y'all north. Just to change up the scenery a little bit. And you'll see that horizon did dip a little bit on the right. However, it did sort itself out quickly. And uh, I've not many flights under my belt with uh, this craft. However, I have noticed that it is very stable. It loves the perfect horizon. And that at this point in time is without any sort of camera calibration uh, available within the app. So it does a small IMU calibration as well as a uh, camera calibration upon boot. My y'all back towards the south. We're 30% on our battery, 8 minutes remaining, 13.36 in flight time. I'm going to lower the altitude. I'm going to come down to about 50 feet because we're approaching the 30% uh, level on our battery strength. Coming down nicely, if you look at it visually, little, very little wobble. I'm gonna give it a yaw to the south. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit closer to where I'm at. Go ahead and yaw it around. Right now, the uh, low battery alarm has sounded at 30%. Bring it on down a little bit. We're going to let this guy just hover. 28% on the battery.
it's deviating uh, a foot or two in its altitude, trying to maintain a hover. 15 minutes, 10 seconds into flight. You'll see I've got my sporty cardboard sun shield. Everything's looking good. It's moving around a little bit, trying to maintain its altitude. Still all in all, it's about four feet off the ground and it deviates up and down about a foot. A Little bit of wind headed that direction. It feels like it may be anywhere between three to seven mile per hour gusts. It's not bad. Fifteen fifty one into the flight. 23% battery, showing 5 minutes, 36 seconds remaining. Doing good. If you watch, there's still a little bit of deviation in the uh, craft itself. It more or less stays in a circle of about a 3-foot diameter. Deviation is mostly up and down, not sideways. I'll have to review this later to see how well positioned I remain in the camera. I can look at my monitor here and see the sky is blowing out a little bit, and that's because the majority of the picture is dark, and uh, of course it's going to blow out anything that's high when it's trying to present an average color. 1642 into the flight, 20% battery, 19% battery, 439 remaining flight time. craft is considerably quieter than some others. Typhoon uh, Q500 is a very quiet craft due to the larger rotors producing a lower pitch. Seventeen minutes, fifteen seconds into the flight, seventeen percent battery showing four minutes and two seconds remaining. First time I've done a, a screen capture with this show application uh, in regards to recording the uh, Starlink app. So hopefully it's capturing, capturing the audio as well as uh, the screen. Got a good breeze, feels like it's uh, maybe 80 degrees, 78, 80 degrees in the shade. Whole different story out in the sun over there. Quadcopter right now sitting in the shade. 17 minutes, 58 seconds of flight time, 14% battery, 3 minutes, 14 seconds of flight time remaining. Looking pretty good, sitting about chin level on me, that quadcopter, and it's about, I'd say 12 foot away, although a wide screen, screen perspective would lend to make it look maybe in the neighborhood of 25 or 30 feet. It's actually about 12 feet from, from it to me. 18 minutes, 34 seconds flight time. 11% battery remaining, showing two minutes, 30 seconds of flight time left. It's landing itself right now. It's on the ground bobbling a little bit. It's on the ground firmly and it powered itself off. So looks to be very successful. All right, so we ended up with uh, just about 19 minutes flight time minus about a minute uh, that I had it up and hovering just to verify everything was good before it took off. So very pleased with this. I'm going to fill these motors now. There's a little bit of warmth, maybe what you'd expect. Not enough, I mean, you could put, put your cheek against them and uh, really wouldn't have to worry too much about a burn. So, looks like a success. Looks like the uh, Altel X-Star is a nice little craft. So that's gonna wrap it up for this. Talk to you later, guys.